Okay, let's take a closer look at Domino on Docker and why this is important for you. Setting up new Domino servers is what administrators like to do on a daily basis. And that is because uh, before they can even get started, they have to request additional hardware or additional virtual machines, additional system resources like storage and so forth to get things done. They need to request an operating system license and probably have to request the setup of the operating system to be done by another team. Once that is done, they can finally get started and install Domino according to their needs. The basic installation is probably the easiest part here. A little bit more complicated is the configuration of Domino with all the thousands of settings that need to be configured according to your company's needs. Now, once that's completed, the setup of business applications is requiring additional tuning. Applications that were developed by business partners often come with specific installation and configuration instructions that need to be followed, meaning the Domino server configuration needs to change according to the application's needs. Now, we've asked administrators on how long this process, this end-to-end -end process, typically takes. And while the first answer is, well, it takes just a couple of hours to install Domino servers, the end-to-end -end process, meaning with requesting virtual machines, with installing an operating system, and with the specific configuration of application settings, this process can easily take a couple of days before the server is up and running. And even if it's up and running, there is additional work for administrators on the long-term run because this machine needs to be tamed by being properly patched, by being upgraded. Not only needs the Domino server to be kept up to date, but also, and more importantly, the underlying operating system requires your attention. This is exactly where HCL Domino on Docker can change the game significantly. Docker, being a role model of containerization, changes the game in form of getting things done a lot faster than before. And let me explain the difference. Let's look at the typical setup of virtual machines nowadays. If you run Domino in a virtual machine, this is what your setup probably looks like. There is, of course, some physical hardware that your virtualized environment runs on. It has an operating system and a an hypervisor, like for instance, VMware. On top of that, you are maintaining many virtual machines. And in each virtual machine, there is a guest operating system. Say for instance, Windows. And in a typical deployment, a Windows server installation requires several gigabytes of disk space in order just to be installed. And we're not talking about Domino yet. This is just the operating system. Domino, on the other hand, is the same all across the various virtual machines. So the, the operating system and Domino itself, this is like overhead that you use to have in virtual machines. Each virtual machine, like I said, using the same guest OS, but then on top of that, you're running different applications or mail workload depending on the machine's usage. The benefit is that you can isolate operating system instances from each other, so one, uh, inter one cannot interfere with the other. But on the other hand, it means that you also have to provide the system resources uh, for each and every virtual machine in order to run independently. And that's quite a bit of an overhead. Like I said, 10 or more gigabyte of storage just for the operating system partition and a couple of gigabytes of memory just for the operating system to run. In the container world, this is way different because Docker containers are not isolating virtual machines from each other. They're instead isolating processes from each other. They, they use a shared operating system, meaning a shared kernel and shared binaries wherever appropriate. And there is not the same overhead as you would have in a virtualized environment because you don't have to install an entire operating system within each and every container. The concept of a container is that it is designed to be portable. So it's small, it uses just the bare minimum settings in order to be instantiated multiple times. So what does it mean for Domino? So the benefit of running Domino in the containerized world is that 
everything that is the same across different containers is being shipped in form of an image. So imagine the image to be something like a CD or a DVD, which just contains the software itself without its configuration parameters, without your corporate uh, applications and databases. The container, on the other hand, is the runtime representation of an image. So when you start the image, it turns into a container and you can add your custom configuration parameters to it. By that, we are reducing the footprint of the underlying container to just the runtime and writable elements that each container will have to maintain. Everything else comes from the image and that causes a great benefit to the total cost of ownership in your environment. On top of your Docker infrastructure, we are going to use a base image, in this case CentOS, and on top we have provided an image that already contains Domino 11 with all the start scripts in order to instantiate Domino with your configuration parameters. In order to run Domino then, we'll need to turn this image into a container. For this demo, the container will be called Tokyo. And since containers do not have any persistency layer, we need to create a so-called Docker volume in order to store your Domino data. This very much resonates with the Domino file system. Domino separates the Domino data directory from the Domino program directory. And what we're going to do is to put the data directory on this volume called Domino data, whereas the Domino program directory is remained in the container itself. So let's do a little speed test for setting up a new server. Um, what we need to do is to create a new operating system instance, install Domino, configure Domino, and start Domino. An exercise which in classic terms can easily take a couple of hours, if not even several days. Let me show you how quickly this can be done in Docker. So we have prepared a script that will print out the parameters required for Docker. Um, one parameter being the server name that we would like to use, another one being the image name. Um, so when the clock started ticking, the Docker engine has started provisioning the Domino server. In order to see the results, I'll need to get a shell into the container to show you that Domino is actually already running, technically already running. So you see show task and probably we need a show server as well. So you can see there it is, the Domino server in 25 seconds. And for the demo to be complete, let's just see if HTTP responds and shows the homepage. And voila, ah, come on, there it is. So you might be asking, can I deploy applications in these containers, in a Docker container? And yes, you can. It is as simple as creating a zip file containing the NSF file or NTF file and adding another file which contains the parameters and that need to be applied to the application. Both wrapped up as a zip file can be passed onto the Docker container. And what it will do, is it will pull down the zip file and apply the configuration parameters specified in the JSON file. And what you will get out of that is shown in the next demo. Same as before, we are starting a script that will spin up a new Docker container with a new Domino server. This time we are passing in another parameter, which is the zip file containing the Domino application and a JSON file with all the configuration parameters that have to be applied. As you can see, Docker has already started spinning up the Domino server. And in order to see the results, we are again getting a shell into the container itself. So here, Within the container, we are opening a, a Domino console, same thing as before. And there you go. And you see a new Domino server has been deployed. Now, this time we would like to get, we'd like to see not the home page, not the standard homepage.nsf, but we would like to see the application being deployed at full scale. You see that I have to log on here with the credentials specified earlier, and after authentication, I'm being brought directly into the Domino app. Not only can you deploy new servers in a matter of seconds, you could also use the supplied management script to help in case of an upgrade. So here, the docker inspect command uh, identified that the new version of the Domino server is available. The 
server that is up and running is actually based off Domino 1001 FP3 and we would like to upgrade to version 11. So let's see how fast this um, is. I'm running the update command and the clock starts ticking. Uh, of course, in order to upgrade a server, we need to shut down the server, in this case, shutting down the Docker container gracefully. You would like to do this because you don't want to keep any databases open and cause any uh, corruption on disk. That's processed automatically, and after a couple of seconds, the server is shut down, and um, the image behind the scenes being replaced with the version 11 image and then mounted to the same data directory. So in just a few seconds, we should see, voila, done. So that is probably the fastest upgrade you've ever seen. So not only can you upgrade your servers in a matter of seconds, the same technology can be used to run Domino pretty much anywhere, like for instance, on this network attached storage device. The picture you see here is a QNAP device, but the same technology exists for Synology as well. They both come with a web UI where you can specify the parameters for running your Domino Docker container. It's a pretty convenient way to start playing with this technology and even to, to scale out to like, for instance, distributed offices and so forth. So in summary, it doesn't matter where you run Domino on Docker, if it's a QNAP NAS, Synology NAS, if it's a large Kubernetes environment or an OpenShift installation. It greatly reduces your total cost of ownership because you can now deploy and upgrade to service in a matter of seconds. It allows to fully automatically configure your Domino servers and applications. What you've seen before works with Domino 10 and 11. Thank you.